All right, everybody, welcome back. So we just finished the broad market analysis. Make sure you watch that video. But today we are going to most likely, well, we are going to make new charts here for the neutral strategy. So this one should be a little bit longer than last week. Um, but what is most impressive, right, is the fact that if you go back and you listen to the last two weeks, not only did this demand zone work that I taught you how to find, but look where we stalled just last week, right to the supply zone. I hope that you had an amazing week. If you had an amazing week using the neutral strategy, I really need you to stop right now. Make sure you hit the like and please leave a comment. All right. So again, this is sort of on borrowed time. I'm not, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to do this neutral strategy. Um, if anything, um, there may be some kind of like broad market analysis that I do that I provide to you um, in other forms. But, you know, take it while you got it, right? And enjoy it because it is Sunday. It is 1130 Central. The sun is out. The water looks beautiful. But again, I'm right here with you, giving you what I feel like is an amazing strategy that allows you to make money, whether you're in front of the market or you're not. These levels, they're awesome. And you can set your trades up while you're away from the screen just based off of these levels. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start over here on the left hand side for SPY. We're going to right click. All right. And we are going to go to drawings and we're going to create drawing set. And we're going to put today's date. And what this does is it gives you a brand new canvas, if you will. All right. So we're going to do that. And then we want to do that over here as well on the QQQ. Um, we'll go to drawings, create drawing set, same thing. And just as a reminder, when you do this, what happens is right down here where it says drawing set, you can save these. I mean, you can name them whatever you want, but if you notice, I have hundreds. I mean, I've been doing this for a very long time and I like to keep all of the data here. Um, yeah, look at that. This is pretty impressive. If we come over here, we have 2021 still in here. I could have sworn I saw some 2020 in there as well. Nope. Um, yeah, 2021, it looks like is how much is kept in here so far. So anyways, so we have a blank canvas, right? And what we want to do is we remember, right, that we had a demand zone down here and we had some supply up here. I think we all know that. So we have went from one zone to the next, right? And let's just recap. Why are zones so important? Because we are basically, um, we're, we're taking David and we're trading with Goliath. I am teaching you how to line yourself up with institutional buying and selling. It's not easy. It looks easy when you come in here a week or two later and you're like, holy crap, man, this, you know, the zones worked amazing. But I guarantee you that a lot of you, all right, will continue when price gets down here to be fearful and maybe somebody you're listening to or something you're subscribed to tells you, hey, we're buying puts down here or hey, I don't want to touch this until X, Y and Z. And then you find yourself way up here and you're like, well, I still haven't taught. I still haven't touched it. And my favorite, you know, guru is telling me to sit on my hands, you know, and it's like, well, not here in the trendy room. What we're trying to do is show you how to get long at the lows and start to trim here and on the pullback, get long again and so forth, right? And really, when you become super professional, and believe me, I am not perfect. I'm still trying to get there. What I really like for traders to do is be able to buy here and hold all the way to here. Now, you may not think it's possible. Some people can do it. There are tricks of doing it to help yourself stay in the trade. Like, I don't know, take the trade, punch yourself in the face. Uh, you go to sleep and then you wake up, right, several days later and you're up thousands of percent. Just kidding. But seriously, it's very difficult to do. But I do try to teach you my best on how to identify the most probable levels to line yourselves up with institutional buying and selling. Now, four hour. Let's take it from here. These are both on a four hour. And you can see that price stayed above the cloud. That's the first thing I noticed. We know that it came into demand. We went from red candles to green candles, red to white to green. Basically, that's just momentum change on the EMA crossovers and so forth. And then we got this cloud. So we're still looking pretty good here. 
um, from a technical standpoint. And I'm sure a lot of people are like, hey, it's a little drawn out. Here's my thing. Just take it one step at a time. So as long as we stay above this cloud on a four hour, I like this to the upside, but I do take into consideration my levels, right? We have a trendy edge there. We have trendy turn signals here. And this is letting me know to be a little bit cautious here as we get close to what I would consider high on the curve. All right, high on the curve of sellers. All right, so we'll go there. But now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna find a couple zones here from a four hour perspective. We're gonna zoom in a little bit. And what you wanna do is you wanna take current price and you wanna come down and you wanna go left, all right? And you wanna find zones and you wanna find explosive candles like this one. That one's pretty explosive. When you look at that candle compared to the other candles, it's pretty big. It's really easy to identify where there is demand. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just gonna take a line and go right above that structure there, okay? And I'm gonna put it about right here. And then underneath that structure comes into about right there, all right? So either this is going to be a target where I wanna get long this week or you know we'll figure it out, right? We always do. But right now we're just setting some levels and I'm gonna find my next demand zone, which I can see that's a really nice candle. And I can see I have a trendy edge here. Um, so we have another zone that's right down here. Now, for far as this breakout goes, we have, we have several different zones, right? We have one here, we have one here, and then I have one right there, okay? Just like that. So these are three different zones, all right? All, all demand zones by using inside and up formations, okay? So we can, again, I'm gonna identify this level. I'm gonna come up just a little bit, about right there. And then I'm going to go just underneath that zone. Now from current price, when I'm looking at it this way, from current price, uh, the lowest target right now is 529. Current price is at 554. And our ATR, our average trading range, let's figure that out. We're gonna come over here with a chart a little bit higher time frame give me one second doing some stuff in the background and basically what i'm trying to figure out is how much the spy according to some of the data move on a weekly to monthly basis and okay i got it right here and you'll see this here in a second but far as the weekly fourteen dollars and 81 cents okay so i'm going to pull out this calculator now remember it's always supply and demand first i don't care about what market makers say the average trading range is just a calculated you know it's math right and math can change it doesn't have to be concrete um, the universe is special that way right so what we want to do here is we want to pull out the calculator though just to kind of see if we're falling within those ranges by using our levels first so again the weekly atr is about 14 dollars. so i'm going to come over here and say okay 554 minus this lower level 529 and that's going to equal 25 dollars. okay so that's definitely outside of the weekly atr and then we have these levels down here 545 by 540. well we do the quick math 540 by this 554 that is about 14 dollars. okay so this is probably going to be close to my last target i'm going to actually bring it down just a tad right there and we're going to put this zone in here now we can make this green here's a little trick if you didn't know this so let's just say yours are gray you just right click here edit properties i like to come in here i got a more um, i like this green which is this one right here and boom we got a green zone now if i want to copy this i click on it with my mouse hit my space bar and then it creates a new zone okay so that's what we're going to do just real quick and again, these are all zones. Now I'm gonna keep these on this broad market and, or sorry, on this uh, neutral strategy because I want you to know where the zones are just in case I'm wrong this week and we bust through the first one, then you know where the second zone is. I mean, we gotta try, right? So right there, and I'm gonna put these levels down here and right there, okay? Now, also let's just talk about a little bit of, um, verbiage i guess right some of the words i use origin the origin of this rally started here that's how i look at that all right 
So this is the origin of the move, and we have an inside and up formation there. And sometimes when things get ugly, prices come back to the origin of the move to find support. So just know that. Now, in a bullish scenario where all my banners are green, most of the time we're pulling back into this area and finding some love and we're not coming back to here. That's what happens in a bullish market. Now, watch this. I'm gonna take some Fibonacci's and I'm going to place them from the origin of the move to the pivot high here. And I bet you that these levels right here are going to line up with Fibonacci's. And even if they don't, it's a great tool to use to see if you're placing or anchoring your Fibonacci's correctly okay so watch this i'm going to come in here i'm going to anchor and go here and i think that's about the pivot high check this out guys i can't make this stuff up you'll notice here we have 23.6 38.2 right here 56.1 and right here the 88.7 i can't make this stuff up guys this is all improv you know that i'm doing it right here on the spot for you to have the best levels ever and then this is what i'm going to do here i'm going to go up here this is definitely a target to the upside and this right in here, we're gonna zoom in, okay? We have a trendy edge, we have a trendy edge. So I'm already, you know, and then we have last week's daily edge right there. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna go just a tad above the high, and this is a common practice for me, okay? So I'm gonna go just above the high, just a little bit. It, it, there's no science behind it. I just wanna be above the high a little bit, okay? And for good measures, let's just make it five, 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 five. <laughs> just like that all right and i already know this is going to be the top of my neutral strategy my neutral box why because i know that there's a high over here i know there's a high here i know that it's resistance and i need this top line to be my resistance level let's go ahead and make this red we're going to make this four so you can see it boom there it is okay now where do i want the bottom of that box now for me this seems pretty straightforward to be honest with you um, I'm going to zoom in here. Notice I have all these edges here and I have a cloud. There's a lot of synergy confluence there. So I'm going to actually move this level or I'm going to copy it. Sorry, I'm going to move it to right there. And now I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to edit properties and I'm going to make it green. Okay. Actually, I had those reversed. Sorry about that. We're going to make this one green and we're going to make this one red. All right just like that, all right? Now, why do I do that? I've always done that for many, many years now. Basically, if we go over the green, look to go long, we go underneath the red, look to go short. If we go underneath the red here on the SPY, I'll be looking, you know, it's gonna bounce somewhere in here, but I'd be looking for basically a reversion uh, back to this inside and up formation here, which also lined up with the 23 and the 38.2, okay? So, so far, we have targets to the downside, and again, I do believe that, you know, uh, I, I feel really good that this level will work this week. And I feel kind of uh, probably about 50% that I feel like this level will work. Okay. So I feel really convicted here and I would still put money in here on the trade to go to the upside, but I, I, I really like a discount. So if we were to come back to here, this is where I'd be looking to, to, to really put my money behind my mouth. All right. Uh, over here, I'm using a target. Here I'm using targets to the downside, but remember most of my targets only want three to four. So I, this is a little too far away uh, from our first short. So we wanna get an idea where we would cover. So what I would like to do is just come in here and I'm going to use right underneath this structure, okay? So what I'm doing, if you were to zoom in, we have this bigger candle here that's shooting out. I wanna come in right underneath the body there, okay? Right underneath the body. So I'm going to put my next target just right under there, about right there. So it'd be a quick short, but you could still make good money, 551 to 549. Um, and then we'd be looking for some support. It'd bounce back up to the red mark. And then if it rolls over, it should come back down into this demand zone. Okay. So target one, two, and three, and an optional four. Yeah, uh, again, I like this area better, but I do think we bounce there if we were to pull back, okay? So a lot of lines, but remember the first four are my favorites uh, for this week going forward. Now to the upside, my first target, really easy, just use a trendy edge. The next thing I can do is come up here. I'm gonna zoom in and when I do this, 
I'm looking for structure to place a target between 555 and 561. Why? It's too, it's too wide. I've been doing this a long time. Again, we're looking for trends and pull those trends up and you want to, you know, be able to ride a trade. So I don't want too wide of a distance between my targets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat it just like supply. I'm going to go from price and I'm going to take my eyes and I'm going to move over and I'm looking for either structure or any kind of signs of topping wicks that kind of help me find a target. So watch my crosshairs on the screen. I'm going to go up from here. Okay, and I'm actually going to go right underneath this structure. Okay, and that structure is right here. All right, just a tad bit more right there. Okay, so 558 is my first target, 561. And then, of course, we have this high over here. So we can go ahead. What I like to do on highs, and let me, let me just make sure I don't think that's the all-time high it could be um, but I just want to want to double check yeah it, it actually is so it's the all-time high we're very very close to the all-time high so what I want to do especially from an all-time high is I want my third target to be right before that high okay so we're gonna come over here and basically you know that's that's it and I'm just gonna come under it just a tad just to be careful Okay, because I feel like everybody's gunning for that, right? Now, let's think about the $14 to the upside. In this case, it is only $10 to the upside. Um, you know, looking for that all time high. Damn, we're close, right? And we could definitely do it, but we're going to have to stay above those clouds we talked about in the broad market analysis. Okay, now that, that makes me want to get a new target for the fourth target. So, notice what's happening here is really from a risk to reward scenario, my better reward is actually shorting, okay? Because the targets are further away, whereas my targets to the upside are very close. And so I'm risking what's between the 555 and the 551 to go long, so about $4. And I'm only getting, you know, a couple bucks here, a couple bucks here. These are This is nicer. I'd rather go long down here and ride this puppy, you know, up to here. That would be nicer but we don't always get what we want. So how do I get a fourth target? This is where we pull out um, the Fibonacci extensions. So we're gonna use this thing right here. It says Fib extensions. I'm going to pick a range. And for me, um, I go in this detail when I do my webinars on Fibonacci's. So I'm not gonna go into detail on that, but I'm gonna pick a range here. I'm just gonna go from here to that pivot high, to the actual pivot high. And we're going to use the five, uh, sorry, the 23.6. Okay, so right there, and you can, again, they all look very close compared to these down here. All right, but again, 568 from 554, that puts us right there at the $14 mark. I can't make this up. So that's what we got. Let's go ahead and put in neutral. And then we're going to, now that we just did that, we can kind of get an idea exactly. And I'll tell you, if you're trying to perfect this, there's no perfection. It, like, I can't build a... I can't build an indicator around this because you use some just basically you use your experience. We're using structure. We're using, uh, you know, candles and we're using Fibonacci. But there's also a part of this where it's discretionary, like, you know, and I'm trying to teach you how I'm thinking. And that's why I'm talking a lot while I do this. OK, so these are my targets. The 14 bucks works. Um, and then after we've done this, it gives me an idea of what I wanna do over here. I can basically copy the strategy that I just did with you over here. And sometimes they're not like that though. Sometimes they're not perfect, all right? And then when we get finished with this, we're gonna go to higher time frames to see if we want to adjust the numbers just a little bit, okay? So let's do this again. We're going to start with price. We are going to move down. We're going to find some structure. We're gonna go just above that, okay, about right there. And then we're going to use use this trendy edge and then there's some structure down here and to the left nice big candle there i'm going to go just above actually just right there all right and what i did there if we zoom in sorry is i put my line right underneath that body right there okay because that looks like a nice little demand zone all right same thing we could come over here 
Uh, we have a little bit of demand there. Now, if you look closely, this is not an inside candle. I've been doing this a long time. I, I could tell you right off the bat, if we take that four hour and make it a two hour, it's most likely inside. So it's just something as you get advanced, you, you understand, okay? Edit properties, we're gonna go to green. Oops, not that one. Just like that. And now we can copy these. And we're gonna come right here. And we're gonna go right here. Okay, there's all of that structure. And actually, and then I'm gonna come right there. So there's a lot going on here. This one's actually pretty wide. It's going to look like that, all right? And then here, this actually makes it pretty easy. I have a level to the upside. I know that's resistance. It's above that pivot high. And then I have um, my trendy edges over here. All right, so I'm actually going to use underneath, instead of, instead of using this trendy edge right here, okay? Instead of using that trendy edge right there, I'm actually going to go under this. Now I'm going to tell you why I'm doing that. So your first reaction is like, hey, let's just make a line right there. You could do that. But for me, I want to go underneath that that strong, you know, four hour candle right there. And it gives me a little bit of flexibility. Okay. It gives me a little bit of flexibility right there. Now this is a pretty wide neutral strategy, but I'll tell you, uh, QQQ always has a tendency to be pretty wild, right? And depending on what kind of trader you are, you can look at this and go, okay, well, I'm giving myself some grace here, a little bit of flexibility, not to get too worked up with a trade in the queues yet, unless one side breaks. So yes, I understand that this is about $7 of wiggle room, but there are advanced techniques to trade the neutral strategy. For example, since we're here, I can go long off of this level, so if we break down and we hit here, even though we're looking, the, the, the newer trader who hasn't been with us for a while is probably like, you know, really waiting to go short on that break. But we always know that as soon as that touches, we're usually looking for a bounce. So an advanced strategy is any level to the downside is support until proven otherwise, we look to take a long off of it. And, and believe me, this thing could turn into, hey, this is an entry to a long that ends up going to our targets to the upside which is really fun. So even though this is the top neutral, this is the bottom neutral, you know, if I'm bullish, which I am looking at these um, green labels up here, then I could get long off of this trim here and then trim to my other targets to the upside. Okay, we'll get to that here in a second. And again, some of these levels may change here in a few minutes. All right, let's just go ahead and make the colors. All right, and we'll put neutral in here. And let's talk about the ATR, the average trading range really quick. All right, so this one's $18.64, and that's a weekly, $18. All right, and we'll get to that here in a second. Uh, just like the SPY, the, Distance from 471 to 465 is too much. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna use right underneath that level and just come up just a tad, about right there. So target one, target two, target three, and target four. Same idea here. Um, I feel you know good that we'll get a bounce here, but I like this area better. All right, let's do the math really quick and kind of see where we are. And we are at uh, 475, okay. And price, if we were to get target three, would be 459. And that's 16. Okay, so we're falling between these two levels right here. We're falling within our, our average weekly ATR, if you will. Okay, now targets to the upside. Let's go over here. Just supply and demand, folks. I've taught you that. And if you don't know anything about it, please watch one of my videos here on YouTube. I'm going to use some structure. I could see it right there. I'm just going to come up there. It doesn't have to be perfect. So our first target out the gate is 481. I'm going to come up to these pivot highs here. Okay, I'm going to go right there. Boom. And then my final target um, is going to be right. Let me see if I want to go under structure. There we go. This structure right here. That's going to be perfect. So what did I do there? All I'm doing, if you watch my crosshairs, I'll freeze this. I'm going right underneath there. Okay. Again, this is 
what was support could turn into resistance. That's the idea. There's 490. That's about 15 bucks. So again, we're coming in about 15 to 18. And if for some reason I'm wrong and we get like some crazy move to the upside, uh, we could see a move into 497. Okay. Now again, risk to reward. You can tell right away that the levels are pretty far away to the downside, which means my risk to reward is better to the downside. And up here, I'm going to leave you with this. Let's be cautious. If you're long, just look to be taking profits a lot quicker. All right. And be patient for the move to the downside, because I do believe if we get rolling to the downside, we will come back to imbalances in the market where these demand zones are. Okay. And we could also come down here. So you can see that. And another thing, if you're interested in the trendy edges, which I know, you know, I think we have, we have a lot of people in our room, um, you know, well over probably 700, um, somewhere in there. And I'll tell you that I think the last time we checked probably 88, 90%, if not more, uh, have our indicators. So for the people who are sitting on the fence, a couple of things I want to note really quick to you. Remember the trendy edges, which is part of your bundle, identify playing fields of supply and demand. So you'll notice that I use structure to find these zones, but if you look close, your trendy edges are already there, okay, in these zones. So they're already there um, helping you to find the zones, okay? The reason why I say playing field, we love playing field. Once you get more advanced, you, you kind of get like, you know, we have a strategy, the PMZ, the most popular one that you guys love. Like, I feel like you can get really particular around that. That's what I want you to do uh, in most cases. But like with supply and demand, all I care about everyone is that we're getting close to a level where I know that, you know, or I feel very confident that the market's going to turn. I'm not trying to be too picky. I just feel like that causes way too much stress and a lot of gray hair. Really, when we get into the green zone, you guys know how I do it. I like to scale into my positions, okay? All right, so that's what we have so far. And now we're just going to take it really quickly, and we're going to go from a weekly, okay? And then we're going to go to a daily. And we're just going to make sure that we can't adjust some of these numbers, and I'll show you why I would and so forth. Okay, so... For example, we're going to zoom in here. See that pivot? Is it in line with the green? Not really. You know, could I line it up? I think so. And let's go there. Let's see. Well, that is about 556, 76. This is what I'm going to do. I'm actually, let me try a couple things out here. I want to bring this down to just right above the top of these two. Okay, so I'm looking at that pivot, that pivot. And then what if we were to bring this down to here? Is that just way too close? I think it is. I think, yeah, I think we stay. Okay, we're going to stay there. But I do want you to take note of this. If anything, we can, this would be a super bullish setup, meaning if we take out this pivot, that's a really good sign by bulls. So I'm going to create an alert here, just so we all know. 556.76, make a note in here. Took out weekly. That's a good thing. So we'll put that right there. Um, to the downside, you know, I don't personally see any reason to change here, but you never know. Let's go here. I think it's good. I really do. We're going to leave that there. Uh, this is an inside and up formation. I love that. All right, now let's look here. You know, this is pretty much right on the body of this weekly. I love that. If anything, I'm going to come down just a tad. All right, just a tad right there. So 481.15. Um, know that this is a pivot. Let's go ahead and create alert right there. At or above. Boom. And this is a supply zone, guys. So boom. This one's beautiful. 
inside and down. So guess what we have? This is from a technical perspective of supply and demand, just like I was showing you last week and the week before how well our uh, supply and demand worked. Now we have a weekly inside and down, right? And it's been there for several weeks, but I just want to make sure I point this out to you. Okay, this is what this looks like. We have this zone. Okay, big. this is the bigger picture. Okay. We create it inside and up, inside and down. The move happened. Price came back to the origin of the move, bounced really nicely. Remember, it closed this past week at the 618, so that trend is now broken back to the upside. And it really feels like, um, you know, our destination, we got a ticket to here. I'm going to leave you with this. Timing is the variable. I really like it as long as we can continue to stay above the weekly cloud. Okay. All right. Now let's go to the daily. See if there's anything that we need to do. All right. So this looks like a power gap up, right? So what I mean is, let's do this. We're going to use the gap and measure to the pivot high. We're going to use the gap and go up to the pivot high. You see why you can't do an indicator for this? <laughs> All right, we've gone from red to white, super bullish. Another thing, check this out, pull back right to the 38.2, bam, worked well. We know what that means here in the trendy room. We're in the bullish channel, things look great. Same thing over here. The power gap that we have here, or the gap up, is holding within the trendy bullish channel. This is a really good sign. All right, let's take that off. Oh, wait, actually, before we take that off, check this out. Our level to the downside is actually confluent, and we didn't mean to do this. This is what I love about you know the process and going through this with you. It's the 618 of the gap. And check this out. You know This, this basically is the beginning of the 88.7 of the gap and if we come over here this is the 50 of the gap and this is let's actually let's fill that gap with target two to the downside so we're going to pull that right there boom i love it all right and i'm gonna see i'm gonna i'm gonna adjust these a little bit all right keep them right there note right here this is a gap fill at or below, these things are important. Okay, gap fill. Gap fill on from Wednesday. Okay. Boom. And let's do the same thing right here. below boom there we go we got two major levels here i love that all right so here's the next thing guys this is getting i i feel like this is getting uglier to the upside on cues we have this this candle formation here basically if you fill in this gap you know this is a big lot of selling pressure in here um could we gap up hell yeah if we gap up i'm going to reiterate this from the broad market analysis I believe, you know, it could be a sell the gap and just wait for price to come into one of our levels that we're discussing. Um, again, I'm wrong if we take these out and hold above, but for right now, I still think your risk to reward is really skewed to the upside. So be careful um, because really what I want to do, you know, this thing is so damn wide, but really what I want you to be careful of is this candle in here. Okay. I, I feel better if we can get above that candle so what i'm going to do is move this just a tad right there 481.50 just know that right around the 481 area there's a lot of resistance um, and this is also a gap fill okay so we're gonna put that in there so you may not get the 481.50 is what i'm trying to say okay just like that. And what do we have over here? Gap fill over here is actually almost perfect.
Now, why is gap fill is important? A lot of time, technical traders, they'll take a bounce off a lower gap fill, and a lot of technical traders will take a short at a gap fill to the upside, and that's why we're going to go ahead and annotate those. This makes up your neutral strategy, folks. I hope you uh, are still awake. Um, I hope you appreciate it. And if you do, again, please give me a thumbs up. Please give me your feedback if you did well last week. Again, it kind of depends whether or not I'll keep doing this. Thank you so much and have an amazing day.